Hey, it's Michael Solbud. Everybody calls me Tiny, and this video is, well, you wanted volatility, didn't you? Plus, a stock to watch and a look at Bitcoin. This is stock market analysis for the week of February 12, 2018 for intraweek updates. I gave four last week with all the volatility that was going on and the big market moves. Go to www.attackthemarkets.com, put in your first name, your best email address, and click the Sign Me Up button. Then go to the email you used to sign up, look for an email from me, click on a link in there so it confirms that it was you that put in your information, and you will start receiving intra-week updates. Let's start this week with Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin has had a nice move off of the highs, just shy of 20,000. And starting from this peak here, which was a lower high, we have a move down, which is the dashed line. Then we have a pause, a triangle that lasted a couple of weeks. Then uh, we had the move that started out of it. And if this move is going to continue, if this is the start of the move down, then we have further to be seen. You can see here on this little pull back here, this bear flag, this move is a corrective move. This does not look impulsive. Okay, the, the momentum, right, this is impulsive. You can see the size of the candles. And this is a daily chart of the Bitcoin versus the dollar uh, on the Coinbase exchange is, is what, where I'm getting the data from. I'm using the trading view chart in order to view this. Okay, so let's look at targets. I have to squish the chart in order to do that, but I'm going to do it. Okay, so the first target is down here from November 12th. That comes in at uh, 54, call it the 5400s. I'll get more specific when it starts heading that way. But if this leg out of the triangle is going to equal the move into the triangle, then we're looking at down here, it's not 33, I don't know what it's doing to me here, but it's kind of screwing me up here for some reason. There it goes. Okay, excuse me there for a second. Uh, it's still screwing me up here. Because it's supposed to be down in the 2800s. I don't know what I did here to mess this up. Uh, there we go. And yes, I'm going to be leaving all this in for you to enjoy. Uh, so there it is, the 2800s. Looks like 2846. So it doesn't matter what the exact number is. But let's read what I wrote here. The minimum target is this November 12th low. And I say the minimum target of the move shouldn't stop dead there. It should at least wash through a bit. Okay. So uh, I don't expect it to stop dead at that low. I expect it to at least wash through it, just like the S&P did with the 200-day, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes. And then this is the measured move if the leg out equates to the last leg in. All right, so that's Bitcoin. I think it's going lower. That's what the chart tells me. Now, I know you're going to hear the permables, the crypto permables, that are going to say, oh, I don't ever go below 5,000. You're just being bearish or whatever. That's fine, okay? Don't take my word for it. Don't take their word for it. Take the chart's word for it. Let the chart confirm what your analysis or my analysis or whoever's analysis you're looking at, okay? Make sure the chart is confirming it. So once we start getting lower and we start coming into these zones, you want to watch the price action down there, okay? All right, great. Let's take a look at the stock market. So the VIX... Wow, at record low levels, the standard deviation of the VIX was at was at never be seen for uh, never seen before, right? Yeah, levels. And what happens when volatility gets so tightly wound, so compressed? Well, volatility is mean reverting. Sheldon Nannenberg talks about that in his book Options, Pricing, and Volatility. So periods of of low volatility, especially extended low volatility, will overcompensate with a big move, and that's what happened. I mean, the VIX got to the highest level since 2015, and it sits back off from there, but still, it's over, uh, it's up here at 29. Now, I have a line in the sand of 30, and it's not a bullish bearish number. There is no, it's bullish above this, it's bearish above this when it comes to the VIX, but when the VIX does get to 30 and above, it tells me that there is higher risk. So for swing trades, I like to reduce position size. This is just what I do. You can do whatever you want. It's your money. But anyway, so we did see an increase in volatility, and we saw it in the majors. All right, so here's the Dow. Here's the NASDAQ. Here's the Russell. Here's the mid caps. 
and he has the S&P. So let's focus on the last three, because the Russell mid-caps and the S&P all clipped their 200-day moving average. And I sent out an intra-week alert. I actually sent out two on one day and two on another. That's how I got to the four. And talked about when price um, approaches a very key number. And the 200-day moving average, even though it's dynamic, it's not a static number, it's extremely important. It's much watched by the institutions. It's much watched by the media. Okay, Even the people that say charts don't work and charts are great, great, great. They still want to know where the 200-day moving average is. And when the S&P got to the 200-day moving average, okay, which was, let's look at it Friday, which was 253.72, if we throw up the 15-minute chart, right? So 253.72 which was down here. Okay, look what it did. It held it, it held it, it held it, and then it dipped below it. And then what did it do? It reversed with a fury, got a nice pop back to the upside. Okay, so what, what I look for at key levels is how we as how we act there and what we do once we breach. Do we get some reactive buying down there, or if it's a high number, if it's resistance, do we get some reactive selling, or do they accelerate it? Do they do they push it? Do they initiate down there? Okay, in this case, it was reactive, and they came back up with price. So, the big question is, are we out of the woods yet? Well, we could be. This could have been the pullback that we were watching for. It was an over 10% by the time, I believe, by the time Thursday hit. I, it just doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm not... That concerned, they're just labels like, oh, now we're in a correction, and now it's more than a pullback. And as soon as you hear that, right, I think it was Thursday by the close, but you know what, I can look. Hang on. Let's just look. So from the highs down there, and I know i got to move that. All right, so what was it? Whoops. Yeah, it was 10 point. Yeah, I thought it was after Thursday. So everybody's excited. We're in correction now. We're in a correction now. And in the end, you know, what happened? Yep, we went lower. Okay, there was a lot of fear. Oh, no, what's going to happen? What if something happens over the weekend? And, uh, and what happens? Now, the smart money was waiting, and they bought and popped it up. Now, whether the smart money or any money feels that we're out of the woods yet remains to be seen. What we want to see here is we want to see if the bulls come back in, take out Friday's highs, and close well from there doesn't mean we can't dip back into Friday's range or anything like that, but, uh, you know, we have to see a nice strong close. Does it have to be as strong as this? Not necessarily. We may want to pause for a couple of days, maybe gear up, and then continue to go higher. I believe that the market will hit new highs once again. I do not believe we are in a bear market. However, I'm not going to fight the market. I don't have to make a decision whether we're in a bear market or not right now. Okay, so if we float up a little bit and it's on lane volume and no participation, no range, and then we start coming back down, okay, I could change my tune. Right now, even at the, the close on Thursdays and even the extra dip, we were not close to bear market territory, which again is 20%. So, for right now, I still believe uh, the bulls are in charge. I think there's a lot of stocks out there that have some nice setups. Other ones may need a little bit more work. So, if you have your favorites, you may want to decide to sit on the sideline a little, see what happens over the next few days, and then look to re-enter if you get a pattern. It doesn't have to be a daily pattern. It could be an hourly pattern, even if you're a swing trader. Okay, so let's look at the Russell. Russell also clipped the 200 and came back, came back above, as did the mid caps. Okay, so why am I so concerned about that 200 day? Well, like I said, a lot of people watch these, so maybe they say, "Oh, look, we tried to get them below it on Tuesday, it didn't work. We tried to get them below it on Thursday. Ah, oh, we closed below it, but nope, Friday we were right back above it." Okay, with the Russell, uh, it's simple. We, we couldn't even close below it. Wow, look at that. The IWM closed like a couple of ticks above it. So even the Russell didn't close below. And the Russell has been lagging. Right? It tried to play a little catch-up over here, but it's still lagging overall. All right, let's look at... Okay, wait. Sorry about that. Diamonds did not get the 200-day moving average. I'm not that concerned, though, because it's the Dow, and the Dow is not the leading index. But the NASDAQ, which is one of the leading indices, had 
okay relative strength compared to the broad market. Still got smack. All right, but if we look, we can see here, top to low, was down more than the S&P was, but chart-wise, it did not get the 200-day moving average. Why? Because the 200-day isn't in as sharp as a, of an angle as we saw the S&P. It's not by much, but if you look, it's or it's a, it's even you know it's playing catch up now because the Nasdaq lagged for a little bit in 2017. Okay, so the 200-day got a uh, was able to kind of lag around with it, right? Remember, the moving averages take past price action in order to plot. So let's look at some of the favorite stocks. Let's go through the indices quick. Here's the semiconductors also didn't hit the 200-day. Banks didn't hit the 200-day. Brokers didn't hit the 200. Brokers actually put a higher low in Friday. So watch stocks like Goldman and Morgan and even like a like Mason, a little bit weak here, but that kind of flush, if that remounts the 200-day, watch like Mason. How about the big uh, semi-stocks? Look at NVIDIA, showing good relative strength here. See if it can keep going. I mean, this is really extended. It's had a monster move here, but showed good relative strength on Thursday and Friday. Okay, how about Kla KLA Tanker, right below the 200-day moving average? I want to see what happens if it remounts that 200-day. Here's Intel, right at the bottom of its range here. Again, yeah, it got clipped on the pullback, but just holding the bottom of the range. Let's look at the big banks. You got, oops, sorry, Bank of America. Okay, holding up okay. Citigroup, holding up okay. JP Morgan, doing better than okay, right? A little higher low there. So that's something to watch, J.P. Morgan. Uh, how about the biotechs? So the biotechs got hit but held the 50-day, also showing good relative strength. BIIB Biogen, right to the 200-day, and then a turn. Gilead, right to the 50-day, and then a turn. Let's look at some of our favorites. Here's Amazon. Okay, wow, what a boom, what a move. Came just shy of the 50-day moving average, though, before reversing. Still closed below the open. Apple, yeah. Apple was in a correction, official correction, 10% you know, or more, uh, before the big move down with the market. But look how it came right to 150 and held so far. Uh, 149.36 is support. And then down here, if it continues to go, we are down to the 142 area. How about the Google, the big Google, or the alphabet, as they like to call it. Another one held the 200-day, the key number 1,000. Look how low it went, 997, and then it turned back above 1,000 and got a nice pop. Okay, program trades, people sitting there waiting. Oh, Google at 1,000 is a deal. Let's grab it off 200 bucks. Yeah, okay, whatever the reason is, it still did it. I love when people say, well, that's um." You know, that's because people were sitting there with orders, or uh, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't care why it happened. I care that it did happen, and it does happen. Okay, does it happen every time? Of course not. Of course not. But it is something to pay attention to. How about the Facebook? Facebook, again, 200-day and a beautiful reversal. Okay? Let's look at the Caterpillar and the John Deere. So Caterpillar has been really nice and strong. But look at this, matching lows, or close enough. If that gives way, look for a pullback all the way back down to the, go to the top of this breakout, down here at 137.60. John Deere, lower low, not a matching low, so Caterpillar is holding up a little bit better chart-wise. But if that gives way, you have a gap down here at 140.43. Here's bonds. A lot of people looking for a bond rally, and I said, eh, it looks weaker then it does um, then it does strong, but again, there's no signal up. We got the signal. It pushed out to the downside. Look for these lows to be tested and probably break. Breaked. Wow, how about that English? Probably broken. Okay, as uh, yields are rising when bonds go down, yields rise. How about gold? Yeah, no flight to safety there. All right, pulling back. Watch the 50-day moving average. We can watch the GDX as well. Remember, my friend Mike Swanson says above 24, or people are not interested in the miners. And here's oil. Wow. How 
had a beautiful coil. Always got to wait for the coil to break. It did, except to the downside. Okay, this was not a short signal. Of course, in hindsight, it was, right? But this was not a short signal because the move leading up to it was an up move, right? Push up bull flag, push up, looking for it to push out. It didn't. It went the other way. So this would be what would be considered a no trade if you were using the charts. All right. So quick recap. Bitcoin, I think, is going lower. Don't know if the market is out of the woods yet, but it could be. We got the nice test of the 200-day moving average on three out of the five major indexes, and you know, three out of the four if you don't even count the Dow. But I give it a few more days to see what's going to happen here. Are we going to take out Friday's highs, and then what are we going to do there? All right, are we going to coil up? Now, if we do see further weakness and we don't take out these lows, look for an intraday um, reversal to perhaps time an entry with the stop below Friday's lows. You know, right now, I mean, if you're swing trading, you're looking for a break of the high, right, with a stop below the lows, and. And people say, well, that's a wide stop. Well, no, it's not. Okay, it, it's the stop that, you know, if you're playing a reversal candle, it's the stop that needs to be respected. So you just lower your size so the risk is the same, right? So that, that's how you do it, right? You don't sit there and go, well, that stop is too wide, so I'm going to narrow the stop. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If you're playing a reversal candle, then you're banking on the reversal candle working and sticking. So how do you know when you're wrong? Well, if it takes out the low of the bullish reversal candle, okay? All right, any questions, you could just write me at tiny at attackwithmarkets.com. Let's look at the stock for this week. It's a stock called Albareo well, Pharmaceuticals, okay, or Albareo. I think I'm saying, I really butcher these names, but the symbol is ALBO, and it is in a bull flag. Nice push up. Right here, the target up here, this came just shy of 40, but there is resistance at $40.20. If we look at the weekly chart, we see it back here in 2000, where is it? 2015. Okay, right up. Whoops. Okay, maybe I missed it because I thought I saw it. No, here it is. I'm, I apologize. Here is the resistance, this little inverted candle still from 2015 but it is forty dollars and twenty cents so that would be the first resistance to watch on this so it'll still be a nice move if it gets going but uh, this is one to put on the watch list for potential long side trade again tiny at attack the .com. with any questions attack the markets.com to sign up for the intraweek updates click the thumbs up on this video so i get to move up in the rankings thanks for your time and thanks for watching this video. Have a great trading week. I'll talk to you intra-week via the emails or next week on the video.